Welcome to this webinar on maximising sustainability with life cycle analysis. I'm Dave Cocking and the main presenter today will be Renjith Jayapalonnaya. I'm delighted to say that we'll also be joined by Travis Dahl from OneClick LCA. Travis will introduce their interface and show you what the workflow in Design Builders integration with OneClick LCA looks like. If you have any questions about OneClick LCA software after the webinar, please contact them directly. So let's start by taking a higher level view on lifecycle analysis before we dive into uh, the detail. As you can see in this diagram, Design Builder has a suite of LCA and cost related tools. Like all Design Builder's main functionality, these cost tools are accessible directly from our fully integrated interface. Using simulation to quantify building performance has become far more widespread in recent years. And it's now at the heart of a raft of legislation and building codes in most countries and regions helping to continuously raise the bar on energy consumption, carbon emissions and occupant comfort. Calculations that used to be very laborious and time consuming, such as quantifying heating and cooling loads with hand calculations or spreadsheets can now be done literally in seconds and much more accurately using dynamic simulation. Life cycle analysis is perhaps another good example of something that was very difficult to do just a decade ago. I still remember how difficult I found it to quantify embodied carbon when designing my own passive house home in 2012. Given the obvious potential benefits of taking a whole life approach to carbon and not just focusing on operational energy and emissions, it's fantastic that it can now be done relatively quickly and easily with tools like Design Builder and OneClick. And that's made even better by our direct integration with OneClick LCA. As the capability of the tools increases, it becomes much easier for nations and regions to add new requirements and better regulation to reduce whole life carbon emissions. That helps to minimize unnecessary consumption of natural resources and to reduce the impact of climate change. This really is a virtuous circle and it's something we're very proud to be involved in. On that note, I'll now hand over to Renjith, who will cover the design builder specific life cycle and cost capabilities. Thank you, Dave. Hello, everyone. We will start today's webinar with a brief introduction to life cycle analysis for those that are unfamiliar with it, and then move on to design builder, review some of the LCA specific model data such as constructions and run a cost and carbon calculation to generate a construction cost and embodied carbon report using Design Builder. We will also run a whole life cycle optimization study to show you how you can identify design solutions that simultaneously minimize life cycle uh, cost and life cycle carbon. We will then discuss the Design Builder one click LCA integration. And Travis Dahl from OneClick LCA will show that workflow. Finally, we will finish off by showing you some valuable learning resources and answer any questions you have. As our planet faces unprecedented climate changes, the built environment has come under increasing scrutiny for its significant contribution to greenhouse gas emissions. In fact, Buildings and construction activities are responsible for nearly 37% of carbon dioxide emissions globally. This sobering statistics has led architects, engineers, and policymakers to consider a more holistic approach to building design and construction, one that takes into account the full life cycle of a building. 
Enter Lifecycle Assessment, a powerful tool that evaluates a building's environmental impact across its entire lifespan, from construction to demolition. LC assesses the embodied carbon of a building, which is the total amount of carbon dioxide emitted during the manufacturing, transportation, construction, and disposal of building materials. It also considers the operational carbon emissions that results from building's energy consumption throughout its lifetime. By analyzing both embodied and operational carbon, LCA provides a comprehensive picture of a building's carbon footprint. But LCA is not just about reducing carbon emissions. It also helps to identify opportunities for cost savings throughout a building's life cycle. Life cycle cost analysis is an extension of LCA that evaluates the financial costs associated with buildings, const construction, service, maintenance, operation, and disposal. By considering the long-term costs of a building, life cycle cost analysis can help decision makers choose materials and systems that have lower environmental impact and lowers costs over time. In short, life cycle analysis is a critical tool in the fight against climate change. By providing a more comprehensive view of a building's environmental impact and cost, life cycle carbon and life cycle cost empower architects, engineers, and policymakers to make informed decisions that benefit both the planet and the budget. And the good news is that carrying out a LCA and LCCA analysis is now easier than ever with Design Builder. With a few clicks, you can analyze the environmental and financial impact of your building design and make informed early stage decisions that help to produce designs benefiting both our planet and your budget. Design Builder's cost module enables you to assess the economic impact of your building design, including construction costs utility tariff and life cycle analysis, all integrated within the main energy analysis model. The construction costs are calculated using standard procedures with full flexibility in input and detailed tablet outputs. And there are options to select the different cost calculation models, including RIGS, NRM, and Uniformat 2. It is more suitable for use with early stage cost planning, life cycle analysis, and cost benefit optimization studies. The operational costs are also calculated using standard procedures, and even the most complex utility tariffs can be modeled using Energy Plus with options to buy or sell and include flat charges and fixed rates. You can uh, you also have access to data on the long-term cost of buildings, construction, operation, and maintenance. This can help design team to weigh up the cost of construction for design features against the corresponding impact on long-term utility and maintenance cost. Design Builder provides a basic report of embodied carbon as well as the equivalent carbon data for the building. Embodied carbon, as you may know, uh, means all the CO2 emitted in producing materials. It is estimated from the energy used to extract and transport raw materials, as well as emissions from manufacturing processes. The embodied carbon of a building can include all the emissions from construction materials, the building processes, all the fixtures and fittings inside, as well as from deconstructing and disposing of it at the end of its lifetime. Equivalent Carbon is similar to embodied carbon, but also includes the effect of other greenhouse gases. It provides an equivalent amount of CO2 that would cause the same amount of global warming as the actual greenhouse gases emitted by the processes involved in production of the material. Used together with operational carbon, the embodied carbon can be included as part of a whole life cycle analysis to understand the overall impact of the building on the environment over its whole life cycle. But that's enough of the slides. Now let's move on to design builder and see how easy it is to carry out these analyses.
Here we have a building model developed by PSI Energy, a green building and sustainable habitat consultancy based in New Delhi, India. The model represents one of the six uh, typical four-story teaching buildings in a college campus. PSI Energy used Design Builder to explore the architectural and system design solutions that offer the best energy performance at the lowest cost for this building. We will be using the same model here and would like to extend our thanks to PSI Energy. We have modified certain aspects of the model to meet the webinar needs. For this webinar, we will review uh, the data relevant for LCC and LCA calculations. So moving on to the constructions tab, there are many construction templates available in Design Builder. The list of available templates is shown here in the uh, info panel. The main constructions are listed in this section below the template. Opening up this external wall construction as one example, you can see that there's extensive library uh, available in Design Builder. In Energy Plus analysis mode used here, the construction assemblies are made up of different layers of materials. Some of the other analysis modes available for specific regions provide additional options to enable you to comply with regional code requirements, such as the NCM inference and library options available for UK certification purposes. Clicking here next to the material name, in the outermost layer, you can see that there's an extensive library of uh, materials available in Design Builder. Most common materials can simply be selected from the existing data. You can, of course, create your own material data if you have a novel material specification that is not included in the library. You could also create a copy and edit an existing similar material. If I open up the material properties for this layer, that is the brick brickwork, you can see its properties. And here at the top, under the embedded carbon header, you can define the embedded carbon data. Embedded carbon means all the CO2 emitted in producing materials. It is estimated from the energy used to extract and transport raw materials, as well as emissions from manufacturing processes. Much of the data provided by Design Builder is derived from Bath ICE database. If you have data from other sources, you can use that instead. We will show you some uh, sources at the end. You can also create your own library of templates with your own cost and carbon data that you can reuse whenever you want to speed up data input in future projects. The capital cost of constructing the building is defined in a number of places in the model. For materials, you can define it here as cost per surface area, mass, or volume, and then specify the cost here. Here you can see that the currency is currently in GPP, but you can change the currency as well as the units uh, to IP units in the program options. Then here you can select whether you want Design Builder to auto-calculate the cost from detail centered for each material layer, or whether you want to manually uh, specify the construction cost. For subsurfaces and surface finishes, you can specify the cost here. This page on our program help gives an overview of the various sources of data used in a building construction for summary calculation. As I mentioned, the capital cost of constructing the building is defined in a number of places in the model. Design Builder uses this data with surface areas derived from building geometry to 
calculate the construction cost of the building. Please note that the default cost of, uh, for building materials, glazings, and other systems provided with design build are indicative only and should be replaced with project specific costs in cases where an accurate cost estimate is required. As you know, costs differ according to many factors such as the, say, the purchasing power of the client, the contractors involved, the country, or even the region or the city in the country. Disabled, I couldn't possibly include all that data, so we provide only the base cost and that can be used for early stage comparative analysis. So you can use the default data as a benchmark and then estimate the percentage change depending on the various design iterations you use. As the design matures, you can then input your own course data specific to your project. For glazing and renewables, the carbon data is specified here in the model options under the carbon tab. This time of study is used to calculate the net total carbon emissions in a LCA study. LCA is calculated simply as the embodied carbon plus the years of study multiplied by the annual operational CO2 emissions. Here we, here we will use the period as 50 years, but obviously you can change it as required if needed. Here you can specify the glazing carbon data and that for the PV panels. Once you have specified all the required input data, you can run a calculation to review the embodied carbon in the building fabric as well as the construction cost of the building design. To run the inbuilt analysis, simply click on the cost and carbon tab and press the update toolbar icon. For the cost calculation, you can change the cost model here to uh, RIGS NRM1 or Uniformat 2. I'll keep it to the basic model. Please remember that you need Design Builder's cost module to run this calculation. Here under the construction cost tab, you can view the construction cost of the building design. This provides an early design stage estimate of the initial construction cost associated with the building and systems being model. You can change the cost model uh, if you want a RICS NRM1 or Uniformat1 using the cost options I showed earlier. Moving to the embodied carbon tab, this page provides the embodied and equivalent carbon report for the building. Here you can see that the embodied carbon is broken down by material and the construction with the total CO2 and equivalent CO2 at the bottom. This provides an effective way to compare the environmental impact of different building materials, designs, and construction processes. It can help to identify elements which are carbon intensive and promote alternative options which reduce the amount of CO2 released. Here you can see that our external wall and external glazing has comparatively high uh, embodied carbon values. So you could assess the assess alternative options which reduce the amount of CO2 released. For this, you can either go back to the construction tab and manually select different options from the library, or a much better way is to use our optimization tool. Optimization is a systematic technique for uh, efficiently identifying the set of design options that best meet the design performance objective that you define. Design builders, design optimization tools allow you to identify a set of optimal design solutions and navigate the trade-offs, helping you decide how to prioritize the design objectives. Understanding the trade-off between the various design options and the impact on environmental performance allows designers to navigate the often complex relationship between design objectives, constraints, and design options, allowing informed recommendations to be made with greater confidence. In this webinar, we will focus on identifying an optimal design 
that simultaneously minimizes life cycle carbon and life cycle cost. This is a typical optimization problem where changes to the input parameters could affect the outputs in opposite ways. For example, choosing materials that would reduce the cost would potentially lead to increase in carbon emissions. So here, life cycle carbon and life cycle cost will be the objectives we aim to minimize and external wall construction and glazing type are our design variables. Please note that detailed HVAC is required to provide access to components with a, with a full set of energy plus fuel types for tariff analysis and life cycle cost. This is because simple HVAC cannot access tariff analysis and hence uh, LCC as it uses ideal loads, HVAC systems rather than energy plus fuels. And in the economics tab, you should also have these options selected. So moving on to the optimization settings. Here ha I have optimization as the analysis type. Our aim is to identify an optimal design that simultaneously minimizes life cycle carbon and life cycle cost. And accordingly, the primary and secondary objectives are set here under the objectives tab. Uh, I have also requested embodied carbon as an additional output. This will enable me to analyze how the design change has affected the embodied carbon of our design. I haven't set any constraints for the study. But if required, you can set one. For example, you could have, uh, say, construction cost as a constraint. This will enable you to quickly identify and remove those designs above your maximum construction cost. Under design variables, I have already selected external wall construction and glazing type. For each variable, I have selected seven options. The library here, the library here uh, provides a wide range of options for you to choose uh, from. So I've selected seven options, but you can select more from these library options here. If needed, I could also add more variables, say roof, floor, or internal walls. For now, I will just keep keep it to external wall construction and glazing type. I will later on show you some useful learning resources that will show you how to set up an optimization study as well as some useful applications. Because of the webinar time constraint, I have already done an optimization analysis with these settings. So if I go to the simulation tab and move on to optimization. Here we have the results of the optimization study. The X and Y axis show the objectives the process is optimizing for, in this case, minimizing life cycle cost and life cycle carbon. The point cloud shows the results of all the simulations run during the process. Each point in the cloud is an individual simulation and each simulation has a unique combination of design variables. The valid solutions that aren't optimal are shown by these gray points. The optimal uh, solutions are plotted in, uh, in red as the vector front based on the objectives we have set. So you have a range of optimal solutions which will help with the discussion with the design team and the client. The objective of the study was to minimize life cycle carbon and life cycle cost and the variables uh, used for external wall construction and glazing type. You can see all the optimal solutions here on the table. The easiest way to identify a balanced result is to click on the path to front, which gives the right degree of emphasis to, uh, to the two objectives. That is, which solution best fit with your client's requirements. The corresponding item is highlighted uh, in the grid giving the corresponding design settings. For our analysis, 
I had also requested an additional output that is embodied carbon. And here you can see the results of embodied carbon. I will sort the designs based on it. Note that you can export the results as a graph in bitmap or JPG format, and also the grid data as a CSV file, if required. I will select the design with the lowest embodied carbon value and select this tool to apply the options to the design. Now going back to the construction tab, you can see that the external wall construction has changed from project wall to super insulated brick or block external wall and so has the uh, glazing type to a single clear glass. Now that you have identified the optimal design, you can now move on and carry out a complete building life cycle assessment. The recommended way to carry out a complete building life cycle assessment is through our native integration with one click LCA, a powerful, yet easy to use LCA and LCC platform. The integration between Design Builder and One Click LCA works by mapping the material names specified in Design Builder to equivalent materials in One Click LCA database. So provided you have defined your constructions using material layers and you have used appropriate generic material names, there's really nothing more that you need to do in Design Builder before loading your model to One Click LCA. To start the analysis, simply click on this one-click LCA toolbar icon. This loads the model to one-click LCA website and starts the analysis. I will now hand over to Travis, who will talk you through the process within one-click LCA. Travis has been in construction industry for 20 years, holding a Bachelor of Technology in Construction Management. In recent years, he has shifted his focus to sustainability and has been working with One Click LCA, where he is responsible for business development in Canadian market, as well as collaborating with startups and utility scale solar development projects. Great, thanks for the intro, Ranjit. Um, uh, as as uh, Ranjit mentioned, um, just quickly uh, for anybody who's not familiar with One Click LCA. Um, what we are is a software platform that's a, a comprehensive uh, a software platform that really touches everything across the LCA workflow, uh, ranging all the way from helping manufacturers produce their, uh, their environmental products declarations. Um, we also collect all of the global uh, EPDs uh, that are available and, and compile them into, into our database and uh, make these available for um, uh, for our, our design focus tools, which is what we're going to be focusing on today, which is uh, really our, our, our building design tools. Uh, we also have infrastructure tools, and then once uh, once uh, the design and, and construction of these projects are complete, uh, we can convert that data into scopes one, two, and three data that can be plugged into our GHG accounting tools as well. Um, so, um, yeah, just uh, uh, zooming in on to what we want to talk about today, which is uh, really some of our life cycle assessment tools, uh, or I should say building uh, LCA tools. Um, we, can, we can kind of uh, zoom in here. Um, Ranjith, can I just uh, uh, confirm quickly that uh, you're able to see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, so this is uh, this is basically our project dashboard. This is a project I put together for specifically for today. Um, and just heading back over to our uh, design builder model, um, picking up where Renjith left off here. Uh, so as as he mentioned, um, there's a there's a native integration, uh, um, just a, a simple button that's 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 in your toolbar. And really the uh, the export of your model into one click is is as simple as one click. So um, so, so really all we have to do is hit that button and it's going to convert the data into um, information that uh, that can be exported into one click. So uh, first thing it's going to take us to this data import page. <clears throat> and for, uh, first thing we have to do is just select the project that we want this linked to. So we're going to 
we'll select that. Um, we're going, we can, we can attach this data to uh, an existing design in our model if we are, um, uh, say, integrating uh, cumulative parts of the project, let's say architectural and structural models. Um, we can do it this way. Um, in this case, I'm just going to create a new design. And I'll, we have we have a ton of different tools. And for this particular project, um, I've, I've I've got a few here, and we're going to go with the uh, um, uh, with the LCA for Lead International. Um, actually, what I'll do is the Lifecycle Carbon uh, for North America. Uh, and we've got uh, whatever the certification is that you're trying to get. There's a pretty good chance that we have tools for it. We have dozens and dozens of different tools for uh, whether it's LEED or BRIM, um, uh, infrastructure-related uh, uh, certifications as well, like SQL and, and uh, PASS 20, 2080 as well, um, uh, and so on. So um, we want to we want to select our tool. The lifecycle carbon tool is is uh, is one of our better tools for uh, whole building lifecycle assessment. So if we want to be uh, including all of the life cycle phases, including the operational emissions. Um, this is really the tool that we want to be selecting. Um, if, if there's a circumstance where we want the, uh, the data from this model uh, um, exported into an Excel spreadsheet, we can also download that model here. Um, that can be useful if you're working with any teams that, uh, that don't have access to one click uh, and they, they need access to that data. Um, they, it can be it can be exported from here, um, but in this case we're going to go uh, we're going to go with with uh, our, our settings as they are and continue on to the next step. Uh, so uh, one click wants to know what is since we're creating a new design what are we going to call this one? Um, I'm just going to call this one design builder. I think I called the other ones DB uh, one two three, and uh, and then we can select our different tools that we want to in, uh, import this data into. Um, I'm just going to go with all of them. Uh, we can also select uh, for for tracking sake as this project progresses through its different design phases. Um, we can oops, excuse me. We can select uh, different uh, um, design stages to be able to track e easier track our designs, uh, especially if this is a larger project that's going through. A number of different iterations uh, that can be that can be valuable. Uh, the rest of this I'll leave at the default parameters just for the sake of time, but uh, but we can we can we can refine uh, the different uh, different scopes of the building. Um, so from here we'll add and next to the page is uh, what it's asking us to do is combine combine similar data points. So for example, uh, for this uh, for this brickwork, there's 144 different elements in the model that, uh, that 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 are similar to this or really the same. So what one click is doing is combining those into a single line item to make this model much easier to work with when we're uh, uh, when we're adjusting um, uh, material um, uh, linkages with EPDs later on. Um, but of course this can be split and divided however however is necessary or however you like. Um, but uh, this is really just trying to make things easier to work with uh, as we move forward. So I'll click on continue. And the next step, it's uh, it's going to ask me um, basically what it's done is it's identified the different uh, elements within the within the model, and it's found EPDs that match those different elements uh, from our database. Um, generally speaking, unless uh, unless in the model we've uh, specifically used a like a branded element where we're where we've uh, um, taken something from a specific manufacturer and modeled it within the uh, within the BIM model. Uh, in those cases, one click is going to recognize that and link it with the, that manufacturer's EPD. Um, but if it's, say, just brickwork, it's going to link it with the generic uh, uh, brickwork EPD that, uh, that that fits with this um, with this particular element. Uh, we can override that here as well. Um, if, if there's uh, uh, other EPDs that we've, we've already decided that we want this, this element linked to, we can change this here. Uh, and what one click will do is, uh, with most offices, um, we're using uh, the, the, a lot of the same elements on from project to project. So what one click is going to do is going to remember our selections for the future. So um, really, the, the the first couple of times that we import a model, um, uh, we may want to adjust these, um, and then it's going to remember our selections from there. Again, speeding up the uh, the workflow as we as we progress through. Uh, and then there's usually Depending on the model, there's going to be a, a, un, unidentified or problematic data. So these are circumstances where one click just wasn't able to identify the element, and uh, uh, it's calling these out, just saying, "Hey, 
uh, uh, have a look at these and uh, link to whichever EPD that you want, or we can leave this data out as well. Especially if this is an architectural model, there may be some uh, artifacts that, uh, you know, things like uh, a water glass or uh, or a painting on the wall, something like that. Sometimes those those types of elements will show up, and uh, and you know, we can we can we can choose to ignore that data. So moving on, assuming that we're happy with this, um, as we click continue, what one click is now doing is it's taking all of this data and running the LCA. Um, so it's linking all of our elements with the EPDs that, that, that we've chosen and, uh, and is running the LCA. And now it's taking us to the results page. But uh, first things first, it's saying that there's a couple of mandatory elements missing. Uh, so something I didn't mention earlier is that to perform an LCA, uh, we need three pieces of information. So one is the materials and the quantities in the building. Two is the calculation period. So how long is this building expected to be in operation? And then the third is the building area. So um, the, for us to, to get this, we just need to plug this data in. So um, Ranjith said, uh, we're modeling this one for 50 years. And if I recall correctly, the building area for this was uh, 5,200. Uh, square meters. So um, we can define we can define define the floor area um, uh, through a variety of different means, whether it's RICs or in this case uh, we're going to go with ASHRAE, um, just because that's what's uh, um, required for this particular tool that I that I'd selected. So uh, I'll save this. And we'll head back to the results page. So here we uh, we have we have a bit of information here. So we can see what our total CO2 emissions are, um, and we can see what our emissions are uh, on an annual basis uh, for, for the life expectancy of this project on a, uh, a meter squared basis as well. So and then of course we have our social cost of carbon, um, which uh, um, is uh, we, we can adjust the the parameters for that as well, um, but. Uh, um, this kind of gives us a sense of what is the total uh, carbon footprint and, and environmental cost of this project. Uh, clicking the drop down menu, um, we have a benchmarking tool as well. And what this does is it takes similar archetypes of buildings and compares them against each other. So we have some kind of live feedback for how this particular design is, is, uh, is doing in comparison to other similar types of, so similar types of buildings. Um, it's regionally specific, so in my case, I have mine set for Canada, um, but uh, um, whatever region that you're in, um, uh, it'll be comparing against uh, similar types of buildings in your area. Scrolling down a little bit, we have uh, all of the life cycle phases. Um, the reason that I selected this tool is because it does have all of the life cycle phases um, included in it. So <clears throat> uh, gen generally in North America, when we talk about life cycle assessment, we're just looking at cradle to gate, which is really our A, A1 to A3 uh, scope. But uh, um, I think I think everybody on this call, we probably uh, uh, all understand the, the importance of really looking at the complete building. Uh, it's complete. Uh, um, uh, um, Footprint throughout its entire life cycle. So, including our construction site operations, our use phase, uh, repair and maintenance, and of course, energy consumption and water use throughout the life cycle of this building as well and the end of life impacts. Um, and, Renjith, I think I saw that you had uh, solar uh, PV panels uh, included in this project. So, of course, we have uh, any, um, any, any impacts that are, that are um, being uh, exported outside of the system boundary. So, that's being included here as well. Um, scrolling down a little bit further, uh, we have uh, completeness and plausibility checkers. So really, this is a quality control check um, where, where for, again, this type of building, we have a range of expected um, uh, emissions and quantities uh, for, for particular um, elements of the building. So if anything falls outside of that, we're going to flag that and say, hey, double check this um, and just make sure that, uh, that uh, there's not an error in your model. Uh, and or there might be just a good reason for it, um, it that uh, you can we can just check check this as validated. I've confirmed that uh, yeah, so th there's no foundation mass in this particular design, and uh, and we can move on. Uh, next one is the most contributing materials, um, and this is of course uh, GWP, and and uh, this is one of my favorite features. It just shows us where low hanging fruit is for. 
uh, if we want to be improving our carbon footprint with this particular design. So um, we can see like our precast concrete and our laminated glass each uh, are contributing nearly a quarter of, uh, of our emissions for this, uh, for this design. So we can zoom in and, and, uh, and target these particular elements and maybe change something with the design where we're using less of that element. Or alternatively, we can we can just go through our database. Um, I can just click on the little question mark here, and it's going to show us uh, a data card. Um, generally, these are going to bring up an EPD, um, and uh, I'll actually select this precast one because I believe this one has. Uh, so this one does have an, a downloadable EPD from ASTM. Uh, we can collect that data, but something that one click has done is we've uh, scraped all of the data out of these. Um, EPDs and put them into a standard format data card. So it just makes it very easy to uh, find the information that's going to be in there and, and uh, do side-by-side -side comparisons. Um, anybody who's, who's tried to find data in, in, uh, and do comparisons with uh, different EPDs from different program operators, um, all of the same information is going to be in there, generally speaking, but uh, the, the, uh, just because of the formatting, um, the way our brains work, this just really simplifies that, that, uh, that comparative process. Uh, one last thing before I close this one out <clears throat> is, is um, what we've done is we've taken similar types of materials and ranked them against each other. So um, with our expert level licenses, we divide that into, um, into really five quintiles and and apply a color-coded cloud next to it, just to make it easy to identify uh, um, whether or not uh, like this this particular material is like where it ranks in that uh, in in that uh, system of, of like materials. So um, this one, I think there's room for improvement with this one. So we can actually go and and uh, and and, and uh, look at changing this out to a different uh, uh, a different material. And then lastly, on the results page, we have uh, um, a variety of different graphs. Uh, however, you want to be showcasing the, this information to either your management or, or uh, um, uh, ownership team. Uh, we've got uh, charts for practically everything, bubble, Sankey diagram, everybody loves that one, um, tree map, and so on. Um, and of course, if there's if, if you're not, uh, if, if you want to present this data uh, differently, you can download the Excel uh, spreadsheet on this and create your own. Uh, uh, presentations with this as well. Um, before, okay, so just quickly what I want to do is uh, um, going back to our project dashboard. Um, uh, so this is this is really where we started and generally, generally this is where any of our projects are going to start. Um, we have again our benchmarking tool and a couple of different charts that just show breakouts of, of how the information or sorry rather uh, um, how, how our footprint is weighted to different parts of the building, so we can we can see that. Um, but uh, <clears throat> more importantly, um, uh, we can compare different designs against each other. So what I have up here is I have three different designs, including the the, the new one that we just did. Uh, I, there's a little bit of data that I that I need to add for that one, but uh, to complete this. But we do have these three earlier designs where we can actually uh, compare them side by side and see. Um, what happens to our carbon footprint in our in this case um, since this is looking at lead in the different environmental impact fact, uh, categories um, how is this each of these designs um, comparing against each other in all of our different environmental impact uh, categories so ozone depletion uh, eutrophication and so on um, from so what it, what I wanted to point out uh, uh, just I guess lastly um, I, I have two more points that I, want to, that I want to cover. First is we have, as I mentioned earlier, we have a ton of different tools. I've selected uh, six of them here just uh, for, um, uh, just to showcase this, but we have do dozens and dozens of other ones. We also have a, uh, a, a new tool that we released last year called Carbon Designer 3D. So uh, it's, really desi it's, it's really designed around early stage carbon optimization. So before any of your design work is done, being able to do a really quick, really simple modeling of, of your building and looking at different uh, um, uh, different construction methodologies, different uh, material uh, types, and being able to um, make early stage decisions before any of uh, any any lines are drawn uh, within uh, uh, within your BIM model. Um, we do also have a life cycle costing tool as well as building circularity tools. Uh, I know that those are becoming uh, much more popular in, in, uh, in Europe and, uh, and we're starting to pay attention to it in North America as well. So um, 
So the, that's kind of it for this page. Um, I won't go too much into our, our uh, uh, materials query, but um, uh, as I mentioned, the, the, uh, the model automatically links to uh, each of your um, the elements from your BIM model to specific EPDs. And, and uh, generally, broadly speaking, it links to, uh, it'll automatically link to generics unless it's a detailed branded element already. <clears throat> um, but what we can do is go uh, into the materials query, search out each of the different elements within this design and select specific EPDs that we want to be using on this project and, mo and modeling this and really optimizing, ideally we're optimizing the, both the cost and the uh, carbon footprint of this, of this project and, uh, and, and then proceeding uh, with our, our, our construction and, and uh, operations from there. So um, I'll wrap up there. I guess one, <laughs> one very last, last thing. Uh, if anybody does want to reach out to me, um, this is my email address. And uh, um, of course, you can go to our website if you're not based in Canada or, or on the Pacific West, I should say the US West Coast. Um, we, have, uh, uh, we have people in your time zone uh, that, that, that can help you out and, and, uh, and have expertise on, on in your specific region as well. So. Um, I'll finish it there, Ranjith, if you want to, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll hand uh, the mic back over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Travis. This, that was very interesting and useful overview. The combination of our presentations today shows that the sustainability and energy modeling community now have tools at their disposal to enable them to quickly, easily, and cost-effectively meet the increasing market demands. Uh, this this will really help our community to make a meaningful contribution to the climate change mitigation. So before we finish our presentation, let me recap what we covered today. Uh, life cycle analysis is a critical tool in fight against climate change. I'm sure everyone will agree with that. Uh, by providing a more comprehensive view of a building's environmental impact and cost, LCA and LCCA empower architects, engineers, and policymakers to make informed decisions. In design build up, during the early stages of your modeling process, you can analyze the environmental and financial impact of your building design using our inbuilt cost and carbon calculation tools and make informed decisions that benefit both the planet and your budget. As mentioned earlier, for for calculation of embodied carbon, much of the data provided by Design Builder is provided by, from both uh, IC database. But if you have other data, you can there use that as well. Here are a few resources. Many companies are now producing uh, EPDs for their material that can be used. Echo Invent can, uh, can be used to gather data for LCA and other environment assessments. Edge buildings provide data on embodied uh, impact of construction materials currently for some specific economies like India, but the future phases aim to add data for other countries as well. So keep an eye out to this site if you need those data. At detailed design stage, you can use more iterative simulation methods to run a whole life cycle study. Design builders optimization tools also enables you to run a whole life cycle optimization study. This will show you how to identify design solutions that simultaneously minimize life cycle carbon and life cycle cost. In other words, it enables you to minimize the overall lifetime environment impact of building while simultaneously minimizing the whole life cost. This sort of long-term assessment is likely to become more widely applied as intergovernmental policy starts to mandate reporting of long-term impact of buildings on our environment and economies. Our encyclopedic program help as explanations for all design builder settings and data items. It also has a section on, our, on tutorials and modeling gates. This page brings together in one place all the various tutorials and modeling guides that are available in program help arranged by sections.
on our webinars page, you can find recordings of all our earlier webinars, including those on optimization. It covers a wide range of topics and an excellent resource that will help you learn different aspects of modeling in Design Builder. To carry out a complete building lifecycle assessment, you can make use of our native integration with one click LCA, a powerful yet easy to use LCA and LCC platform. One click LCA is based on an extensive database of previously accredited materials and design builder materials are automatically mapped to one click LCA equivalents when modeled, uh, when the model is imported, as you have seen from Travis' presentation. The integration enables design builder users to transfer design builder energy models quickly and easily to one click LCA for additional materials analysis. Achieve BRIAM Material 1 LCA and LCC credits, as well as LEED LCA and Material credits. And use one click LCA's material database to get a true picture of the carbon and LCA performance. In short, this integration offers an opportunity to accurately model the total carbon footprint of a building, taking into account both embodied carbon and opera operating carbon emissions. You can learn more about Design Builder using these resources. If you are new to Design Builder and want to get a feel for the software, these free uh, tutorials are an excellent resource to get you started with Design Builder modeling. However, if you are looking for a starting point for structured learning of Design Builder, then our on-demand training provides you exactly that. So that's all from me today. Do remember to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on LinkedIn, where we regularly post content on software news, upcoming events, and webinars along with uh, tips and tricks.